Hey, Spuddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome back to Let's Plays Europa Universalis 4 as Yemen. I almost said civilization there, just out of pure habit. So, the Trade League of Ragusa has disbanded, there are not enough members left. We're, uh, we're kind of sitting around, we're just training our troops. We're going to be recruiting a little bit more of an army because we do have a very slightly bigger army force limit. Now, we're kind of holding on here because Mercurian Separatists are getting ready to rise up. Integration is a slow process, so that gives us our vassal. My general will no longer serve with us. We've got some prestige. Excellent. Let's go ahead and recruit a new leader. Okay, so he was a 2-3-2-5. Holy hit. That is a lot. So the Ulema... Let's go in and give the Ulema a province. Maybe a province with some unrest. Maybe I'll give it one of these two provinces. I'll give it Shendi. Because Shendi's a bit smaller, but it has a similar sort of unrest level. We'll give this to the Ulema. That'll give them a little bit of, uh, little bit of power. Uh, the Mercurian Separatists are getting ready to go, so I'm going to cancel drilling now and let my armies recover as we wait for the uprising. Uh, we could get cabinet, but I think we were kind of... We think we made the agreement to try and get our tech up to be not so far behind in time. Although it is really tempting to get this, but this is the best time to get tech right now. Once we hit past 25%, I think I'll probably focus on ideas again. Vijayanagar. Hire Farsi officers. Let us continue to rely on our own opinion. There's 270 for 5 army professionalism. I don't think I want to do that. I think I'm happy letting army professionalism kind of go up on its own and spend it when I feel like it. Gain manpower when disbanding. The really nice one here is the morale damage taken by reserves. That's, uh, that's, once you get up to a professional army, it's pretty powerful. But for now, I'm just going to take the opinion. My army's getting pretty big, pretty powerful. Some of the uh, thingies are coming down. Now, I'm looking forward to upgrading my government, which I'm not too far away from doing. Because I don't think you can naturally change the government. Because we could reform to a thingy, an administrative monarch instead of being a sultanate like the sultanate has some really useful things like the income from vassals monthly autonomy change double diplomats number of states national focus cooldown all these really good things but i think i think it's time for us to upgrade come on shendi is now a part of our patrimony so uh let's see let's go for ethiopia maybe i can declare a war to humiliate them while I wait for my power to tick up. I know Adal would come to that war. Let's have a look. What if I went to war with Ethiopia purely for humiliation? I want to move towards mysticism. So where's Bayuda? Bye. The unrest reduction would be really nice here. More than the autonomy change. And again, I'm trying to go towards mysticism here. To speed up the conversion. Bayuda is now considered part of our patrimony. Excellent. Berber is now considered part of our patrimony. These are all really good things. It means that these provinces have a slightly lower tolerance for unrest and stuff like that. Okay. God is good. Ah, prestige and diplo power. So let's grab the diplo tech. Navy morale increased. Artillery fire, artillery shock, and better cannons. Ooh. Ooh. I'm excited at that. We'll grab that pretty... Pretty happily, I'll say. Okay, the truce with the Mamluks has ended, so we're going to want to declare war here in, I would say, the next three to five years. Hopefully the Ottomans aren't in any wars themselves. We do have 11 favors, and we have become a little bit more powerful in comparison to the Ottomans. So... They... Um, 
We've become a little bit more powerful, so we'll get favors a little bit quicker. But uh, I'm hoping to use the Ottomans to help me conquer some more Egyptian provinces. Because I think that's like the biggest way I'm going to get stronger. Is by conquering Egypt. Because th they have, um, their culture group is like the most like mine. Now I do have to get through Mercuria again, but that's a sort of different thing. And I, I'm going to be fabricating claims on them actually. Speaking of which, I should do that. Fabricate Dongola. And Sahra and Nubia. We'll take these two provinces. I may even vassalize them. I'm considering it. It's an option. I don't think I will. I think I'll just conquer them. And then try to convert their lands. Unify my unify my nation into one single superpower. But uh, Hormoz went the way of the dodo, which is good news. I actually missed that, which is uh, a bit silly of me. But you can, you're a little flute. I think I'll just delete you. Or maybe I'll sell you to Faraz. Faraz. Hey Faraz, uh, would you like to buy my fleet? You'll pay zero ducats. Sind, would you like to buy... Mushasha. Gujarat. Exceed your force limit. Who wants to buy this ship, damn it? Adal. You want to buy a ship? Alright. Guess what, ship? You're getting deleted. Okay, we've got 6k troops in here. Uh, how much can we take? We can... We have to lose two of them. So I'll probably lose a cavalry and an infantry. I'll split this in half. I'll send one half to this army and the other half to this army. So now that this is actually dealt with, we can actually go back to drilling. This rebellion was dealt with, so we can go back to drilling. And um, we need to think about what our next move is. I would like to humiliate Ethiopia, but who is their rival? They, they haven't revi rivaled me. Ah, yes, I can humiliate them, actually. Because I want the power projection. If I get the power projection, that'll be really, really nice. So all I want to do is humiliate them and extract cash out of them. Hey, three prestige for converting. Uh, let's see, where's Suhar? So Suhar... That was over here. We have the missionary strength edict on, that's okay. Excellent. So by converting these religious provinces, we're, uh, we're stabilizing our nation a little bit. But I think we're starting to become something of a, you know, a mid, no, small superpower. We're not like, we're not like Ottoman level, but I think we're like Great Britain level, I'd say. Somewhere similar, not exactly that. But on, on, a, on that kind of a scale. Now the, the Ming is falling down the tree though, because they're having trouble getting their institutions over to them. Which is understandable, because the institution actually seems to spread rather slowly over there. I'm really not sure how they got the Renaissance so quickly. It actually kind of blew my mind a little bit. But, yeah. So the printing press now, eight years on, has spread. Done a decent amount of spreading. It's even coming up over here to Lithuania, amazingly. I'm not really sure how. Province or nearby province is reformed. Ah, it's spreading through the Protestant lands. Interesting. There's also a chunk over here happening. Ah, it's a Protestant province. Very cool. Even the Ottomans are getting in on the action in their capital. Fairly slowly, but still, you know, they're getting in on it. Speaking of capitals, how cheap is it for me to develop here? So my capital city is 20% cheaper. It's in the mountains and it has a high development already, so it's still quite expensive. But it is cheap, relatively cheap. So let's unpause the game here and move along. We're letting our armies prepare for the invasion of Ethiopia. Purely, f again, purely for power projection. We want to have... We're going to have lots and lots of power projection, so we're going to declare war here. Let's call Adal. Call Adal. They're in some debt, but they will... They will join because they have a hive of trust. So following options are disabled. Enforce tributary. Transfer vassals. Declaring war will move us towards legalism. That's not ideal. We don't want to move towards legalism. But it's okay. We're going to declare the war now. 
Let's conjoin these armies. And we're going to start working our way down to his capital. So we have a pretty large army in comparison to him. In fact, I think one of my 17 stacks could take on his main army. But we'll see. Cavanagh down in his... Ooh! 10% tax modifier for so many years. Nice one. 10 years. And um, we'll also take a... Miltech here. And we may as well upgrade our... I think I like the idea of large cast iron. Because it gives them that little bit more offensive fire. A little bit more offensive fire can be useful in battles, even though artillery right now don't really do a huge a huge amount. But they do they do a little bit now that they're able to fight from the back row, because they have 1.4. Uh, let's see, Dimmy Administration. So the Ulema would gain loyalty and influence, or the Dimmy would give me a cheaper advisors and more advisors. I like the idea of cheaper advisor costs. For how many years? That's like 15 years. That's a lot of money saved. We take 15%. Yeah, that's like a duck it. That's like 15 times 12? Is like... It's like 180 ducats. You just saved me 180 ducats over the next uh, 15 years. Which is not a huge amount, but it's not insignificant either. A bit of a battle going on here. Eh. Keep going. You guys will be fine. So declaring war on my mortal enemy was very useful for my uh, nation's morale and stuff like that. We're going to be going straight for his capital, essentially. Uh, put it into the administration or into the treasury. So, this is going to give me an extra few states. I'm going to grab this now. Wait, do I, did I invite a scholar? Yes, I did. Excellent. So, I'm going to put it into the treasury or invest the money? Hmm. It's a hard choice. We'll go up to 12 here. If I were to take this... This would get me this quicker, but the money would also be really nice because it means I can do a lot more. Put it in the treasury. Let's keep sieging them down. Where'd your army go? You go siege the capital. Wait, are you the one? No, you're not the one with the siege points. You go there. You siege the capital. You're the one with a huge, huge amount of siege pips here. Five siege pips. That's disgusting. Jesus Christ. He, he like, sees down a province. Oh, that's crazy. He's, he's only at minus 14% on a level 3 fort. That's disgusting. Keep sieging these down. He's already at 0%. This bloke is absolutely outrageously good at sieging down provinces. It's like the perfect time to go against Egypt now. And they should have a, they should have lost a little bit of their army power because we, we cut them down. Oh my god, and we breached the walls. Oh Jesus Christ. The siege is already done. All right, a great advisor in our employ has died. Now, I think we were going to stick with a level 2 advisor here. So we'll take the spy network construction, even though it's not ideal. I think we do need the diplo power because we do, um, we do have an idea to fill out here. So I'm hoping to get these filled out up into the next level. Trade efficiency here especially will be quite nice. Hanafi scholars have been our guests and are now gone to other Medinas. Okay, we can call those in later. We can reform the government now, which I'm excited to do. 
Uh, I think I might wait until I get an Ikta, and then I'll reform the government. See if we can catch some of these armies now. Let's go for the fight. Win a couple of battles, get a bit of prestige from fighting. They're claiming some of my provinces as their own. Ah, yes, that's the province we want to fight in. Ah, look at this. So I want to extract... So let me see. I want to set up the piece that I want. I want all your money. I want war reparations. I want humiliate. And I want to end your rivalry with, with Adal. That'll net me seven prestige. Um... A lot of power and a lot of money. So that'll be 92 score, so we pretty much have to occupy him. That's pretty doable. Can you chase him down? Where the hell is he running? Well, look, just unoccupy some of this territory. So let's, uh, let's shift consolidate. And attach a few little brigades here. Oh, they slandered my merchants. Those jerks. Let's see if we can't get some of these provinces occupied real quick. This this reminds me of uh, back in the day, before Forts were a thing. This was pretty much how you did every, every war, was you just put little stacks around to occupy people. It was, uh, it was a joyous time. It was also not such an ideal time either. So Mogadishu won't take peace right now. But that's fine. Let's bring these armies together. Let's bring this stack down to clear out these peasants. Would you guys come back up here and reclaim some of these lands for Adal and myself? Ah, he's now a charismatic negotiator. We got diplomatic rep. Diplo rep is actually quite a useful thing to have because it improves a lot of hidden things that, you know, maybe you wouldn't think it does. Like, like it improves your relationship with your vassals. It improves your general relationship. It improves people's mo like li likeliness to accept your deals. Ooh. Oh. Oh my God. He has five siege pips and five and a fifteen percent siege ability. How fast does he siege a province down? Oh, that's just disgusting. How could you get a more perfect siege leader? I need to take a screenshot of that. That's like... That's disgusting. I think I'll help my ally out too with this uh, Wailatian separatist thing that's going on for him. He did join my war. And he'll be happy that I defended their territory. Oh, Bavaria has become the emperor. Ooh. The, evang the evangelical, evangelical Union is victorious. The war religion the empire has ended in victory for the um, Evangelical Union. The emperor has been forced to abdicate and Protestantism is now the dominant faith in the empire. Uh-oh. How long will it take until the next league is built? We'll have to see. There's very few electors right now. Exciting times. Exciting, exciting. Ooh. The spread of reform as well over here. Oh, there was a chunk of reform. What is this? Riga became reformed? Oh, no wonder. And it spread it too. Oh, man. Things are getting crazy over there. Speaking of trade regions, if I have enough power in this trade region, could I do religious spreading? 
Yemen is a, has a merchant in Ethiopia. Trade Nord is not is in a trade company region and has 50% more power. Oh, it has to be a trade company region. Oh. So I could spread like Islam over here. Hindi is getting... Hindu is getting nice and strong over here. Who is this? Assam. Is that like proto-Tibet? I'm not sure. You're a tributary of Ming though. Ming has some pretty crazy power over there. Hopefully one day we'll be able to challenge them. Ethiopia, will you will you take my piece? No, almost. So let's go clean up some of these things. What's going on here? Ah, uh, yeah, spare no expense. Oh, you're sieging down my stuff. How, how quaint. Bob Brandt is having a civil war. Ooh. Good luck, Bob Brandt. Those things are usually not great. What if I take a little bit of this money away? Okay. Oh, you'll accept it now. You'll humiliate war reparations, all that good stuff. So, Ethiopia will be forced to give them temp give me 10% of their income each month to pay for war reparations. This will last for 10 years. Ethiopia will be humiliated. Ethiopia were forced to remove Adal as their rival. Ethiopia will pay 169 ducats to Yemen and its allies. I'll get 93 of that. This will result in some inflation. Uh, with the humiliate rival Casas Bell, Belly, uh, Yemen suffers a base zero aggressive expansion. We get seven prestige. I get 3.8 of that. And I get 30 power projection, which is really what I wanted. Because I humiliated them. And now I have um, a pretty decent chance of this. Although I would like to finish more of these objectives. I don't think I will be able to. Um, I, don't, I don't think this is going to happen. Humanist or religious ideas. I shouldn't. I should have known that, and had had a plan to get either of those. So we need to get a little bit of manpower. I'd like to be at twenty five k manpower before we declared war on Egypt. I mean, ideally, I'd like to be on full manpower before we declared on them. Ah, offered a hire from Burgundy. Adal has embraced colonialism. Very nice. Let's have a look. Improve relations. I like privateer efficiency. Um, philosopher. How uh, could I hire him? Like at a reasonable. I'm making how much ducats am I making per month? It should be a good amount. I mean, I think I could hire that level three advisor. He's only slightly more expensive than a level two advisor. I think I'm gonna do it because then that would let me focus on diplo points for a few years. And I'm only losing like a duck at a month, which I could easily bring that up a little bit through um, through like lowering my maintenance or something. Diplomatic uh, relations? Yes, because I want the yearly prestige. Even though I did say this was the best time to take techs, I wanted the yearly prestige. Uh, big time to keep my prestige nice and high. You can see, even though I'm at 27.1 prestige, I'm getting, I'm still gaining prestige per year, which is amazingly useful. Uh, let's see if we can claim another province of the Mamluks. Ah, so they did, they decided to declare the war first. So did that give me trust with them for answering the call? I don't think it did. But uh, national decisions, we can reform the government. I think we were going to wait until we got the next ICTA, which will happen in three years, and then we'll look into reforming the government. But for now, let's have a look at the status of the war. So again, we're against Funge and the Mamluks and Tripoli. We also have the potential to get another ally if we so choose, because we have deleted some, some enemies. So actually, while we're kind of on that topic, let's have a look. Who would actually ally me? So Sindh would become my ally, and they would maybe be okay as an ally. Who else? Yao would become an ally. 
Ak Konyulu. No, I don't want you. You're, you're going to be food. You're food for the Ottomans. I would like one of these. Maybe someone who could fight me, fight with me against Fars. If I were to try and expand it to Fars. So maybe it would be like Sind. You many navy friends, Sind opinion. You many diplomatic reputation. So they would absolutely join Sind would. Who else? Very few other people would. I think Sind might be a good candidate here because it gives me a way to push into this sort of area. And we'll see where that takes us. So let's have a look. Let's make some states. Uh, the Ulema and the Emirs are demanding more provinces, so I'll quickly do that before I end this this uh, episode. So, Emirs, you may have this Kharapi province over here. Here is another cattle province. That'll keep you happy. And the Ulema, the Ulema Bulema, you may have this province right here. Reform the government. I'm not ready to take that decision, but there you go. Uh, yet another great episode for us. We managed to pick up a lot of power projection, which is giving us plenty of bonuses, but most importantly, it's giving us that extra one point per month, which is like having, you know, even better, um, even an even better position than we were. Interesting. I think if you upgrade an advisor skill, I think they do become more expensive to maintain. But I'm going to call that an end to this episode. I want to thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying this series. Please remember to subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. Remember to leave a like if you want to directly support my channel. And remember to leave a comment if you want to give me your feedback. Other than that, though, I want to say thank you very much for watching. Or I love you all very much. And I'll see you next time. <laughs> I got mixed up. My bad. <laughs>